Hello, 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 Tyler Bryden here. I hope everything is going well. I got this new hair. It's still not used to it shining in this uh, little glowing light above me here. I hope you like it. I hope it doesn't distract you too much. I'm going to jump into my little screen here so you don't have to worry about it as much and talk about today's topic, which is starting to emerge and is, uh, I think, super, super fascinating, this uh, sort of intersection of uh, technicality, of innovation and AI, um, ethics, and that is that um, OpenAI is apparently developing uh, a watermark. And basically, the main idea here is that, um, you know, obviously, chat GPT, but just OpenAI's GDP system in general has really had sort of an exponential rise here. And tons of people are using it to create content, do all sorts of different tasks. And uh, in many of those um Right now, it's indistinguishable if a human is creating that or if an AI uh, is creating that, if GPT is. And, you know, in, in many cases, that might not be a harmful thing, but in some cases, uh, it might be. And uh, and then there are all these other elements in places where this can have big consequences. And I just think of, for example, if you are um, creating uh, SEO content online, um, if you are you know, publishing content with GPT, um, you know, apparently there's some things that are going against the guidelines there. And so there's this then, uh, you know, um, incentive for search engines to uh, understand is this machine generated or is this human generated? And truly is this high quality content, which provides value to people and lots of sort of arguments around, hey, it's pretty easy that the text that um, comes out of these systems is relatively robotic, blah, blah, blah. I shouldn't have said blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry. Uh, all those things are true, but in, you know, in most cases with the right sort of prompt uh, engineering, I know people don't like that term sometimes, you can um, build uh, output that is relatively indistinguishable, sometimes same quality and a lot of times better and obviously quicker, uh, which intrigues a lot of people. And I've talked about sort of uh, these systems before and just the the accompaniment of like human laziness and instant gratification that this all supports. And so all of this is sort of culminating at once for the need for some sort of water marking uh, system. And so as always, I'm sitting here, I've got a bunch of links, I got a bunch of things um, that I'm thinking about. Uh, and I've got a couple articles, so just scroll through and pick up uh, a couple sort of key points off them. And, um, you know, you've, you've got them there in the YouTube description on my page, if you want to want to check these out in a little bit more. And one of the interesting things that sort of you know emerges is how do they uh, accomplish this? So there is, if I've got my link game um, set up um, properly, there is um, a re- sort of a researcher who apparently was working on some co- quantum computers and then uh, came over to OpenAI. And so his name is Scott Aronsons. Uh, and basically he's yeah, developing a tool for statistically watermarking uh, the outputs of a text AI system. And it would be unnoticeable to us as readers, um, but it would be, um, you know, obvious to um, open AI. And, and then I think this is where some of the concerns start to emerge. So who, if there is this key, um, that key is obviously, you know, somewhat proprietary in, in, in instance or theoretically, and who do they choose to share that key with? So do they share it with um, uh Google, um, because they are the ones responsible for indexing search content and it goes against the services, or is that a conflict and so that they don't share it with Google? Um, uh, you know, how does that um, understanding of the uh, encrypt, you know, sort of the, you know, sort of hidden watermark in this data get passed around? And I think it creates an, uh, a case where people want to understand that. And if they're doing it in ways that seem unfair, there might be challenges um, that emerge. I also think um, there is then the drive, which will be, hey, I'm going to take the original output output from um, GPT, because uh, it's maybe the best model, the highest quality one, and I'm going to run it through um, another model. Um, and then, uh, you know, just tell it to rewrite that. And so immediately, you know, uh, ideally, that sort of um, water market is then broken. And so there's also some amazing talk in sort of the challenges here about how flexible or adaptable this 
watermarking um, actually can be, should be, or needs to be to be effective. Uh, one of the uh, great comments that I loved on Reddit was pretend that you were chat uh, X, uh, XPT, a language model that doesn't add a cipher to the text. Uh, and so, you know, just some sort of, I mean, these are very technical, stupid, silly jokes, but um I think that, uh, you know, there's a lot of people obviously uh, interacting with this technology. And in some cases, they see the positivity of doing this. And I think a lot of us can see the positivity of this if done right. But then I also see sort of the um, sort of the consequences um, to it. And um, there has been a working prototype. This is not the first um, version of sort of watermarking techniques in text. There's a bunch, so a bunch of categories of sort of how they've done it. And, you know, some, I, I'm still technically grasping around this, but it could be something it, like one of the questions is, is like, simply, is it like there needs to be an A and it's obviously much more complex than this every 27 characters, uh, um, in the text. And then the question is if that, sort of watermark needs to be embedded, does the quality of the content uh, remain the same? And so I think that's one of the main sort of questions and then just concerns um, that, that people are thinking. Generally, I think uh, there is um, this question of like what ad blocker, of course, here we go. Um, ad blocker is that there's already like lots of challenges in the world with this technology becoming out uh, so, um, you know, quickly and rapidly with such easy access. So we'll kill the college essay. A student in New Zealand has already admitted that it used to help boost their grades. Um, governments can flood social networks. Spammers can write fake Amazon reviews, content online, more convincing phishing emails. And then it's maybe not sinister, but just con you know, completely personalized uh, marketing content. All of these sort of technologies on the back end that allow us to understand who you are and then write, uh, you know, make um, uh, advertising material that um, resonates most deeply with you so that we can sell things to you will continue to improve with advents of, uh, of technology um, uh, like this. Now, a couple, uh, you know, last things that I'm sort of thinking about in this regard, it, well, first of all, it's super interesting. Um, yeah, let me um, see if I can um, see this pull uh, pull this up. Just see where we are in the journey of um, like search trends on this, because I'm what I'm seeing is articles are just starting to emerge in sort of December 2022, and and obviously, uh, you know, probably. Um, there's a little bit of uh, focus being put on this, but I'm seeing here if I go see worldwide in the past 12 months, interesting, I pulled this back up so you can see a huge spike, uh, uh, you know, relatively low, like, you know, there are some in, in early Jan of 2022, but then um, peak, reaching a peak as some of these articles uh, have come out. And yeah, it does look like there are some related queries that's maybe dirtying up this data, but I think what this speaks to me and what I'm just trying to elaborate with this point is that there's such a a huge adoption of this platform being like for actually being used, but then also massive awareness of it. With that brings in, uh, here are the consequences of it. Here brings the ethicist. Here brings the human computer interaction layer. All of this stuff sort of combines to make this a super, super interesting, I think just sort of study on how we embed technology um, into the world. And one of the things that I think of, it takes me back to my university where we talk about Amish sort of communities and how Amish people actually, before they accept technology into the community, they will have a meeting and a get together. And obviously this doesn't scale to the world that we're in, but they, they basically get together and uh, they need to communally agree that this technology is uh, acceptable to be adopted into our community. Now we're way past that point, but it speaks to an element. And, you know, at least what I'm seeing are some early signs that there is some work some thought being put into this and you know Elon Musk famously left OpenAI because um, uh, you know he was concerned about some of the ethics and stuff um, that go in there I shouldn't just say ethics and stuff it's like act super important stuff with, especially as this um, you know continues to grow um, but I think this will come out of a necessity and as more cases that things are uh, 
you know, work well, but then things break, the need will continue for this. And again, this is not live now, um, but some people maybe think that it will be embedded in GPT-4 uh, with that release coming in 2023. We're not exactly sure. There's still a lot of people who don't think this is going to work. Um, I'm excited to follow the story. If anything, you know, truly, you know, interesting and worthwhile jumps up, you know, I'll be creating a video about it. I hope that uh, this was interesting to you. You got some insights from me. I'm still sort of early into understanding all of this and, um, you know, understanding like what, how this is going to implement the consequences of it. And uh, I think this is just absolutely just stunning to see it all uh, unfold in real time. Uh, and uh, I hope you feel the same way. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye. <laughs>